Yay. Awesome. <clears throat> Great to see that again. Thank you. And now I want to welcome, we have a guest host now for this part. Uh, I want to welcome Courtney J. Body, Director of Education at the New Victory Theater in New York City. And, and, sorry, my, my video is still playing. And she's also the creator and host of Teaching Artistry podcast. So welcome to Courtney. Hi, thank you for having me, Todd. Um, I was very happy to have been invited. And Shannon, um, I, I really appreciated what you've created here and, and how well you've articulated uh, flow in a way that um, a few years ago I was investigating the same idea, but definitely did not get it to that sort of level of clarity. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, so Shannon, I was curious about um, the just the the I guess the 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 integration of flow into the moment that we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And, and so I'm curious about, uh, you know, that sort of charge that you gave everybody at the end there um, to be more metacognitive. And so I'm curious, we've all been in um, staying at home, uh, shelter in place, lockdown, et cetera. And I'm curious how you've been able to integrate flow into your daily practice, daily life while we're in this moment. Yeah, it's a whole new, I mean, it's a whole new landscape and there are pieces of this landscape where it's like, wow, like it, we really can invite all sorts of new creative possibilities and thinking and solutions. And then there's another part of this landscape that really shows the beginning of my talk and how, you know, the, the systems that are in place that support the patriarchy and these ideas really prevent creativity, you know, like, if, if, if we didn't have to worry about, you know, health care or, or the roof over our heads or our basic needs and safety, what would, what would creativity and, and this landscape, you know, look like? So we're up against a lot. We're, we as a society are up against a lot. And this is where we see the decline of creativity in the study. Like, you know, we don't need a study to tell us that we lose our creativity the more indoctrinated into society's messages of conformity, you know, we become. Um, and then in the, the other side of the shadow is the light. And it's like, well, herein lies this opportunity for us to just like use our creativity to, to be subversive about this, this, these systems and these problems and to, to try and evolve to something new. So to answer your question, <laughs> I've been really exploring, you know, that tension and that push and pull with flow in this new space. And um, I have found that, that flow is showing up in my everyday life when I am, um, connecting to others and, and connecting to my experience and their experience and doing it through a creative outlet. Like, I can't say that I've reversed engineered flow in like my grocery shopping, you know, like with my mask or whatever, you know, just because I don't think that that's the place for it for me right now, you know. Um, but I think that there are so many empowering opportunities, especially in living in a house with many people, you know, having to share internet, um, having to really look at not only the systems with outside of ourselves, but how they come within ourselves um, to just really um, get thoughtful about how we can create these, in, how can we, how can we like manufacture or not manufacture, but sort of, um, see these ingredients around us and put them together in a way that will find us on in this flow path, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the other thing that I sort of latched onto in your, in your presentation there was the idea of, of how creativity can, can help us create new solutions to old problems. 
Um, and this is an old problem, isn't it? It's a historically embedded issue in terms of uh, white supremacist, patriarchal, hierarchical societies. And um, that's where I, my brain starts to go to is, the, is to the sort of systems and the systemic pieces and the emergencies uh, that were already present, but weren't necessarily viewed as such, and how those become exasperated or uh, even um, more amplified in, in a situation that we're in right now in terms of the pandemic, and then its response, or lack of response, or lack of support for response. So um, I'm curious in, in that instance, like just thinking more broadly, as opposed to the grocery store, right, so the sort mm -hmm. of personal, is around around that idea uh, it's similar to what I've been trying to understand how how I can think more on the ma macro level to get to the micro level and I, those ingredients that you're talking about um, to me have to do with like community building so what you just said about how do I interact with my community or my neighbors or my other fellow artist colleagues and how do we engage even if it's in a small way, that, that could create that ripple that you were talking about in the piece as well. Do you have any thoughts around, it's not really a question, but do you have any thoughts around that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I feel like creativity is the most subversive act that, that we can participate in because my kind of creativity, the kind of creativity that happens through the flow state, when I get into it at least, is when my most authentic self, my most authentic voice and experience come forth. And the more we allow for that process and the more that we, I, we uh, can promote that process and teach that process, the more we can allow others to see themselves and to be seen. Mm. And in systems that only wanna see white people and white people in certain ways and you know champion that as the norm and of beauty and of rightness and you know all of these other words mm. um you know the more we can we can give voice to everybody's experience and everybody who everybody is and um uh amplify that so that we can see it from ourselves, like we can see ourselves in our art and then other people can also see us. And, and when we see ourselves and when we see others, a more visceral connection happens that I believe has the opportunity to supersede what's happening in this machine and um, start to offer new solutions to old problems. Um, when, when we humanize each other, it's a lot harder to dehumanize each other. And there's nothing more humanizing than the creative process and the creative output. And so like the more, like the art that I'm offering is art that I really want to believe at least <laughs> that anyone can do with very little, you know, like there's not these barriers to you need a kiln or you need like a fancy paint set or you need some art degree. Like, you know, this is, here's the ingredients here. Here's the very limited materials. And I want to empower you to know that there's no right or wrong. And the best art you can make is from yourself. Like, you know? Mm -hmm. Very much so. so. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that, that that falls very in line with, with the sort of line of inquiry that I have for my podcast, as well as the video series that I'm going to tell you about soon. <laughs> but thank you again for your amazing sharing of your of your work and I, and I hope that the work um you know in in small and big ways continues in 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 ways that can really impact communities and, and humans yeah thank you yeah I was really struck um by your keep making art um podcast um I I really I think it's so important for me as a professional but then also like in permeating into our culture to see different ways that people are making art and see different um, avenues and approaches that people are taking and, you know, look at the different um, 
people that you're featuring in the way that ways that they are showing up and making art, you know, like, I just feel like the louder um, we all can get in terms of art or creativity, any art form. I grew up in the performing arts. I was like, yeah, and I went to Fordham at Lincoln Center. So oh, okay. I know the new, Vic um, sorry, yeah, I, I the new Victoria, why am I victory. sorry new victory I'm like having a word moment <laughs> you know like I'm 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 familiar with your you know the organization that you work with and I just think the more ways that we can show others and help others see that art in whatever form is a basic need that we need to prioritize as such like the more we can make it happen and, and let's let's take that moment now to uh Courtney, let's, uh, let's learn more about what you've been doing uh, with your podcast and your video series and, um, and how we're celebrating. This is Teaching Artists Appreciation Week. It sure is. Um, thanks, Todd. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so I can show you a little, a little quick uh, uh, little slide that I have here. Um, so Teaching Artists Shoot Courtney J. Body podcast um, is a monthly podcast that celebrates artists and advocates for community engagement. And um, we have been around uh, since 2017. And uh, we have the a really great global listening uh, community. There's about 30 audio podcast uh, episodes and counting. And uh, you should check us out at teachingartistry.org. Um, this is where, this is sort of the hub for everything. So you can learn about our mission um, and you can also access the episodes themselves so you can see what's new. Um, hopefully it'll it take a little while to load. Um, so you can follow us on SoundCloud uh, or Apple Podcasts or wherever you actually listen to your podcasts. Um, this is an episode that is of Dale Davis who actually started um, Teaching Art, National Teaching Arts <laughs> Appreciation Week. Uh, so it's very fitting that she's our, our latest episode and um, uh, a new, uh, or the second half of this will be released uh, Thursday. So this is where uh, all the episodes sit uh, that you can access here, but like I said, you can access them anywhere you get. And then we also, um, we also launched, uh, I think it was off uh, April. I can't. What is time? I don't know. But in <laughs> April, uh, well, actually in March, when all this happened, there was this big campaign that came out through Creative Generation with a, a, a large cohort of um, entities who were focused on teaching artists. Came up with a campaign called "Keep Making Art," and then the podcast took that to figure out how can we add to, to the sort of um, different ways that we could be inspiring artists. So we built a, a video series of the podcast um, with the same name, Keep Making Art. And uh, there are currently about 20, uh, 20 something, 26 um, episodes. They're about, they're anywhere between 30, 25 to 45, <laughs> but mostly 25 to 30 minute um, conversations where we're talking to artists through uh, this, this exact uh, uh, platform of Zoom um, about their uh, this moment, their art making, who they how they identify as an artist, and um, uh, what they're actually doing now, or how they're thinking. And some of them are at they are all at different places in their art making and creative uh, creative processes, um, and and how they're thinking about where they are or where they have been and where they're going. Um, so they, yeah, we're uh, just all that. Yes, blah, blah, blah. So you can also, um, you know, check them out and share them with your, your colleagues. Um, the other thing that we're doing is some of these episodes will be shared on the audio podcast. So if video is not your thing, there's another platform for you. Um, you can follow us on um, Facebook. Uh, we are also on Twitter, Instagram, and we just launched a pod shop. <laughs> so if you want merchandise, you want a tote bag, a mug, a t-shirt, a hoodie, you can go there. And um, I just really appreciate being able to share uh, what we're doing. What's lovely is that these are artists and creatives 
um, in terms of both the audio podcast and the video series from across the nation. And, and we're starting to have more international guests on the Keep Making Art uh, um, uh, video series where we're actually talking to an artist in China. We're talking to an artist in South Korea who you know, were at the, at the beginning of this pandemic and now are in, living in countries and cities that are opening back up. So we have an opportunity to learn from their experiences and their, you know, their challenges. So it's been really um, important for me as somebody who is, works for a cultural and is trying to figure out a whole lot of things at once, but also wants to support the teaching artist community who we know have been very, very deeply uh, impacted by the economic needs and the fact that they're missing the communities that they work with and then ultimately for their own creative, um, creative processes. So we're hoping that all of this content can help inspire artists um, to feel connected, to feel like they can make art in whatever small or large ways that they wish. And so if you have any um, ways, if you have any reason, you can also email us or you can reach out to us on any of those social media platforms. And we'll, we'll keep sharing uh, you know, your content in, on, our, on our social media channels. Um, so thank you for sharing. Thank you for joining us here. And, uh, and Shannon, I also want to give you a chance to share. You've been, you've been on TV too. Sure, yeah. Should I, I can just share my screen. Is that okay? Uh, or? Yeah. yeah, let's take a look at that because that's right. pretty exciting. Sen okay, great. Um, let's see. We're going to see that. Uh, Here so I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, I have had like this really exciting opportunity and I don't know, I'm sorry, I just realized that I have hidden my here it is. <laughs> Here we are. Um, I've had a really exciting opportunity to go back to my like home roots as an artist. Um, I grew up in the performing arts um, and that was kind of like my first access to it. My mom was a music te is a retired music educator. Um, and actually I had a really formative experience that um, through a conservatory program experience, I decided to just leave the performing arts. That was my solution at 19 years old. And uh, it wasn't a very like productive or healthy solution, but that's what I did. And um, recently I had the uh, impetus to uh, write songs and perform them that advocated for art and showed how <laughs> art can you have be- Melvin Edwards, uh... Uh, oh, that's what you're seeing. Okay. Right. Let's, let's see. That's a great quote anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very much into this quote. Um, I saw this at the Sound of Nation um, at the De Young, that, that exhibit. Yeah. Um, that's it's a really big piece of my, my um, f you know, belief system about creativity. Um, I'm sorry. I just realized that I've... <laughs> not done a good job sharing my screen. Um, but I hope that quote helped you. <laughs> in some way. Um, but this is my YouTube channel. And, um, and this is where all of the songs that I was, uh, I guess I was just telling you about, um, as well as art making episodes are living right now. Um, because we're, we've moved out of the classroom, I've tried to find ways to still connect with um, people who want to make art or because we've moved out of public spaces for making art. And I just find that creating television episodes are really um, accessible because people are sharing devices, people have limited Wi-Fi, you can't get on at the same time. Maybe you feel like making art in the morning, maybe you feel like making art in the afternoon, you know, and this is a way for, for you to connect to, to those accessible things. So, um, I'm speaking to the universe when I say that I hope that there are future opportunities for me to share um, art advocacy and accessible art making and flow with a larger audience through television, through interactive television, um, you know, in more of a public arena, um, because some of the most important ways that I've been able to access art and I've been able to see myself in art and as an artist has been through people like Mr. Rogers um, and, you know, um, other, other figures that have, have shown up on my television screen. 
So that's what I hope for myself in the future. And that's what I'm aiming for. Perfect. So thank you for the sharing. And thank you for everyone who came on and, and joined us in this, in this show.